So good morning everybody. Um, here we are on uh, Thursday the 10th of September for morning prayer at uh, St Denis. You can see the beautiful window behind. Um, this morning our readings. Uh, if you wanted to, to read the psalm set for today at home, uh, it's Psalm 143, 143. Um, and our Old Testament reading comes from the book of 2 Samuel, and it's chapter 19, verses 24 to the end. And the New Testament reading, which we shall hear in a moment, comes from the book of Acts, it's chapter 12, 1 to 17. Um, so let's, let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our, our mouth, mouth shall, shall proclaim, proclaim your, your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so we will say our morning, Thursday morning canticle. I have given you as a light, light to the, the nations, nations and, and I, I have called, called you in righteousness. righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it. Who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind. To bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and shall, shall be forever. Amen. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And so we're continuing the book of Acts, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. About that time, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with a sword. After he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four, to four squads of guards, soldiers, to guard him intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. But the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realise that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane, when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, now I am sure that the Lord has sent us his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. As soon as he realised this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many had gathered and were praying. When he knocked at the outer gate, a maid named Verona 
Rhoda came to answer. On recognising Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the gate, she ran in and announced that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, You are out of your mind. But she insisted that it was so. They said, It is his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the gate, they saw him and were amazed. He mentioned to them, mentioned, motioned to them with his hand to be silent, and described for them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he added, Tell this to James and to the believers. Then he left and went to another place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's an amazing story. It's quite funny, isn't it? I, I, I find that quite funny, seeing Peter knocking on the door and no one letting him in. Um, yep. Yep. But they were, they were hiding, they were behind locked doors because of the persecutions yep. of Christians Absolutely. in those days. And, uh, and in those, if you continue through the story of Acts, you continue to read about how um, the Christians were persecuted and... and for centuries, actually. It was about um, three centuries after. There were a whole series of really, really violent, extremely violent persecutions. Mm. And these were, this was one of the only ones. Yes, yeah. But we, um, we don't think of Christians being persecuted, really, in our comfortable um, Hampshire home, do we? But um, no, you, you've no, been no, having yes. some conversations recently, haven't well, you? Well, actually, just this week, I've been talking with... Um, um, Christian figures in, in Nigeria and, and terrible, terrible things are happening in Nigeria at the moment. Dozens of people being massacred almost every week in parts of Nigeria. And, um, and also just yesterday I was talking to a bishop in South Sudan um, and great conflict going on there. And yet amidst all of that, uh, huge faith, tremendous faith. And the people, the people that we're talking to, talking of great hope and continuing to carry out their ministry and have faith in God and, and, and continue their services and their, their, their witness to, to Christian faith. And, and that's, that's what I find utterly remarkable. When you think of the, you know, we go back, right back to the start of the church and these early disciples, I mean, there they knew what had happened to Jesus. Um, Peter must have known that, that the same could happen to him and indeed it did. And James and John. And James and John had been um, killed with a sword. Um, and yet they had this courage and the, the, the faith to continue to witness and, and that goes on today. Yeah, yeah. And, and you've seen it also amongst conflict, haven't you? The, the faith of Christians uh, continuing their ministry, continuing to pray, even if their churches have been bombed and they can't get into buildings. And, and the fear of extremism and, and, and being attacked and, and absolutely, and, and, and still... And many still staying, and many still worshiping, and many still um, communicating with their neighbours, and 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 um, struggling to maintain uh, dialogue with the other, and 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 keep that Christian principle of love and dialogue and mm. and worship and ministry. But for for us here as Christians, we don't suffer that kind of persecution um, obviously but we, we can see the, the reduction in Christianity in this country um, and Covid obviously has caused great disruption to our churches here in our benefice um, and, and across the country across the world um, but um, we don't have the persecution in that same way but maybe maybe we persecute ourselves sometimes. Maybe we limit ourselves and we don't trust God enough. Um, I wonder if we can imprison ourselves sometimes in our own minds, in our own thoughts. One of the things this reading brought out in me is, was a question, you know, what, what are the prisons, what is the prison that, that we all have? And the, you know, they're all, whether it be guilt or whether it be anger or hurt or pain. Um, Lack of confidence, what, anxiety. All sorts yes. of things. And, and mm. in, in, in all of us, there, 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 are, there are prisons, sometimes of others creating and sometimes of our own creating. Um, and whether they're of others creating or our own, 
it's very often very difficult to get out of those prisons. And, and the, 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 the message of Jesus and the promise of Jesus is that he releases us. As we, as we offer our lives to him, he releases us from that. But do we let him? Yes. You know, uh, Peter thinks it's a dream um, and, and he, he follows. But actually in the metaphorical sense, in our own prisons, um, sometimes we're so bound up in our, in our prison and our chains that it's very difficult to let somebody let go of them. It is difficult to, to relinquish your, your control, perhaps, over your life, your comfortable prison, maybe, yeah. um, and, and to say to God, here I am, take yeah. me and use me. And it's, that's very frightening, mm. actually, isn't it, to, mm. to come out of our comfort? Um, because even a distressing kind of prison can still be a comfort because we know it and it's familiar. And letting go, and letting God, mm. is is difficult. Shall we pray? Yes, indeed. So, Father God, we lift to you all those who are imprisoned. We pray for people who are imprisoned in their own minds and their own thoughts. We pray for those who suffer from great anxiety or depression, those who find it hard to let go of guilt or to forgive others and are trapped in a spiral. We pray for prisoners, those behind bars. We pray that it would be a time to we look at their lives to recreate themselves, to be able to walk out of that prison a new person. And we pray your help, Lord, with that. And we pray for those Christians around the world who are persecuted. Thinking particularly of our Christian brothers and sisters in Nigeria, in South Sudan, across the whole of the Middle East, in Asia, in so many places where Christians are suffering. We pray your strength on them. We pray that they would be steadfast in their faith. And we pray that we would be too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, Lord, in the world. Praying particularly for our own benefits here in North Baddersley, in Chilworth and in Ampfield. For our deanery, for James, our area dean. For our diocese, our bishops, Tim, David and Debbie. We pray for all ministers in these difficult times when ministry has changed so dramatically. We pray for our congregations unable to attend church, some still shielding, some still finding it difficult to go out. We give thanks for the ministry of your church in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of those who we hold in our own hearts and are in our minds, families and friends who are unwell or suffering in any way. In just a moment of silence, we think of all those on our prayer lists, those who we love. And Lord, we give thanks for those saints 
who have gone before us, those whom we see no more but have been such a part of our lives. We pray for any who are grieving, any who have lost loved ones recently, praying particularly for the family of Norman Head, whose funeral takes place later today. For any who are, who have anniversaries around this time of year. And we pray for all of those around us who have no one else to pray for them. Merciful Father, Accept, Accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And the collect for this week. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you. Through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our of Father, heaven, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us, and keep us from all evil, and in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's nice to have you with me. Thank you. It's good to be here. Sun shines on the righteous. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bless you. Have a good Sorry. week. Yes, bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.